Welcome everyone to another episode of the Powerhouse Podcast. I am super thrilled with my guest who is joining me in the ring today to go a few rounds and to have the big conversation around how we're choosing to show up, how we choose to serve, and that whole message and definition around what it means to be a leader today. And so before I introduce the amazing and incredible, fabulous Dr. Manette Ryordan, I just want to say thank you for her being here and how honored I am to have her playing in this space with me. So Dr. Manette, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks so much for having me. It truly is an honor to be playing in this ring with you today. Oh, so excited. And we're going to get really deep, really fast, I assure you. And uh, again, this is our place to have those big, juicy, meaty, courageous conversations and dance a little bit in our own uncomfortable and vulnerability. So we're going to play with that and see what shows up. Before we get started, let me tell you why this woman is such a powerhouse and why I truly am blessed to have her here on the show. Dr. Manette Ryordan is successfully built a multimedia publishing company, turning a small quarterly newspaper into a monthly magazine with a circulation of 50,000 copies distributed through distributed over 300 locations around Dallas, Fort Worth, Metroplex. She's an award-winning entrepreneur and best-selling author. After a decade in the publishing industry, Manette sold her publishing company and relocated her family to Santa Barbara, California. She is the author of the best-selling books, The Artful Marketer, The Fundamental Business Guide for Creative Entrepreneurs, and Instant Insights, a time management system for creative entrepreneurs. She now runs her thriving coaching and training company with her husband from their home near the beach. Doesn't sound too bad at all. <laughs> While she's not working, she, when she's not working, she loves spending time with her family, taking long walks on the beach making art or enjoying a glass of wine. This woman is a soul sister in every sense of the word. You'd be surprised we're not sharing wine right now as we have this conversation. So Dr. Manette, I am so thrilled again to have you here. And I know you have some things that have been moving and showing up for you as you have been dancing in this space around leadership. So before we go there, I'm curious when you think about Standing in a place of leadership, when you think about what that means right now with everything going on, what does that mean for you? What does that look like and how does that show up? Um, gosh, such a great question. So, so two words instantly popped into my head, integrity and vulnerability. Mm. Um, you know, the first one, that piece of integrity of making sure that I feel completely aligned on the inside with how I'm showing up in the world on the outside and my own leading edge in terms of leadership this year is bringing more vulnerability and really owning where I've been hiding in my life. And I've been in this fascinating place of query, looking at the concept of self-love as opposed to self-esteem, mm. because there are many places in my life, like nobody would look at me online or, you know, think that I was struggling, right? Like my life is pretty freaking awesome <laughs> on a daily basis. I'm doing work that I love. I live in a place that I love and I have an incredible amount of confidence in about eight tenths of my life, but it's those two tenths right, that are really holding me back. And for me personally, and I think this is true for a lot of leaders and, and entrepreneurs, um, and for me personally, that's in my relationship with my body and my relationship with how I think I look or how I perceive I look. And I had this moment of um, feeling like I was in the boxing ring with, with myself, right? It's like I reached a moment, finally, it only took me 53 crazy years <laughs> to reach this point of being like completely over waging war against myself. And this isn't about society. It's not about, um, I could get on my soapbox about media and, or my mom or all these other stories, right, that I make up in my head about why I'm waging this war. And the truth is, it is a place where I allow myself to hide mm. because it's scary to go wholeheartedly into the world with every piece of me. And so what happens is that um, I feel splintered. I feel fragmented. I don't feel whole. And the journey started with me with art. This is my art on the wall behind me here in the, in the video. You know, it started with sharing that little bit of piece of me and, you know, pulling that fragment back in and other fragments back in. And I realized that there's this like giant splinter <laughs> still there, right? You know, it's like thinking of the lion's paw where the little mouse comes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
to come and pull this um, this splinter out about how can I be so kind and loving to other people and yet talk to myself like I would never ever talk to anyone else in the world. How yeah. can I stand in integrity and tell my clients to stand up and be their champion and their cheerleader and not feel like I could be that cheerleader for myself? Yeah, and um, first of all, I have to say, even hearing that, I personally have to take that deep breath through that. And I think the thing that I love most about you, and I'm already getting all the chills that are showing up, so it's amazing where the show's gonna go. I can already see this. Um, the vulnerability that you're willing to step into even right out of the gate is something that I so deeply appreciate and honor uh, because it's not easy, especially I have found the bigger your game gets, the more every eye is on you to say, Manette's got it figured out. Candy's got it figured out. They're out there making all this heyday and they're going and they're creating massive change and influence and people are fine. How can they possibly not have all their stuff figured out? In fact, for some people, it's actually challenging, I think, to recognize that underneath it all, we're still human and we still have that, that, that seed of self-doubt, that seed of questioning our own self-worth, that those, those barriers, that noise, that those negative frames, those filters, those things that hold us back. Yeah. And it's, it's oftentimes, and it's interesting, especially being women, it's interesting how, and I love, cause you mentioned something about living a wholehearted in your wholeheartedness. And I think about some of the work Brene Brown does mm -hmm. around that. Right. And where yeah. shame shows up for women and it's, am I enough? And am I pretty enough? Am I this enough? Am I enough? So I, I honor that you went there and I really want to get into this space because when we talk about vulnerability, I think people forget the essence of what that really means and what that's like the bigger your game gets in that space, how much scarier that vulnerability gets to openly say, I don't have it all figured out or only I'm confident in about eight tenths of my life and I'm spinning a little bit in the two tenths or I'm actually drowning. And I've had those moments where I'm like, man, that two tenths kicks my ass. I mean, it yeah. just kicks me out. And so how have you, first of all, welcomed the vulnerability to the table? And where have been some of those shifts that have said, now is the time to have a bigger conversation? Because you moving into that space of self-love is a, is a shift. And so how did that switch or that trigger make this be the time that you're that you're going to walk in that two tenths and start putting that out there yeah thank you it was um a lot of just deep soul searching around um trying to pinpoint why things aren't going as fast as i want to in my business like i you know why am i not doing like what's stopping me from creating vis more visibility mm. right so and it was that moment of noticing that i'm hiding in plain sight and people feel it when you're holding parts of you back. But also in the work that I do with creative women entrepreneurs, you know, in this coaching business for the last five years, Candy, seeing how much this um, I'm not enough mindset impacts women, right? And I look at my business and I'm like, that's, it hasn't stopped me from building a business. So where is it stopping me from fully living a life of just joy and wholeness? And through all of my own crazy art and journaling and everything, you know, and it's like beginning of the year and pick a word for the year. <laughs> and um, the word that came to me was wholeness. Wow. And so I'm looking at going, okay, where am I not whole? Mm. If I'm living um, a whole life, what does it mean to live a whole life? It means honoring and loving all the aspects of myself, even the ones that are hard to love, yeah. right? So honoring the judge, the, the critic, right? Honoring the maybe not so perfect daughter and the not so perfect wife and the not so perfect mom and the not so perfect business owner, like all these things. And it's funny because I, you know, one of the, the moments that really pinpointed why I needed to be more vulnerable, I shared something on Facebook. I don't even remember what it was about, you know, something that I had royally, can I curse on your show? Royally, you absolutely can. We royally have fucked up, right? You know, and it was like, it was really messy. And I, so I'm, I'm sharing this. And somebody posted in the comments, um, I'm glad to see you're just as human as the rest of us. 
And I'm like, am I not sharing this stuff out? You know, I, cause I'm seeing the mess and I'm feeling the mess and I'm very comfortable. I'm sharing it with my clients and my group calls, right? I'm, I'm sharing it. I share some of it from stage. So where am I not sharing it? Where am I not showing up? Where am I glossing over or minimizing um, the truth of what it looks like on the inside? And so through that exploration, what it came down to is this is the piece, this relationship with my body. Um, it takes a lot of physical energy to do the work that we do, to stand up on stage, to hold sacred space for the women in our communities and our, our rooms and the men in our communities in our rooms. I don't feel good. Like I'm used to having, I'm an energizer bunny, having tremendous amounts of energy. If I can't right. stand in front of the room for three days, I can't do what I'm called to do. And so through that exploration of looking at why did this happen, right? How did I get to this place where my, my body is so other, right? right? Right. Where as opposed to feeling this beautiful alignment of this, you know, this is, it's all one thing. There is no separation and yet I'm treating it as other. So on my own personal journey to share this and investigate this, I want people to come and play with me. Right, because I'm one of those people that I'm gonna actually do the work if I've got witnesses. <laughs> right. Well, and that's I mean that's a powerful thing because most people and I, I think it's interesting that you talk about the recognition and the awareness around hiding in plain sight and mm -hmm. then being like, but I will take responsibility to do the work if there's witnesses. Yeah. And so because that was one of the questions I was actually gonna pose was, you know, how do you hold yourself accountable in this space when that shift, when that transformation is happening? And I also have to comment on the fact that. There is something about that sucker punch when you are like, I think I'm showing up wide open. I think I'm showing up in my wholeness. I think I'm very transparent because I had a very similar situation where I had asked a client, I had some noise that just, I could not get moved one day. And I sent him a text and I said, you know, I need to reschedule our one-on-one -on -one call. I don't ever do this, but right now I cannot get out of my noise and I know I can't be present for you. And I remember his response being, wow, I'm really glad that my coach of six months is human. And I remember that sucker punch going, holy crap, how am I not standing in a place when I, in my integrity is to be as transparent as possible is mm -hmm. to stay. And I'm like, I don't want people to think I got it figured out all the time. There's magic in the mess, right? And there's, I don't want to also be the person that's out there always just sharing my mess. There's a responsibility in that too. Right. But there is something to be said for that disconnect between how we think we're showing up and what people are choosing to perceive in how we show up. And so there is an incredible power in what you said that was while you're hiding in plain sight and recognizing that, to also then say, I'm gonna do the work if there's witnesses around me, because I want you to really talk about what it means from your mind. Because the, the questions that I had were, how do you measure that? How do you measure that definition of success that says, I wanna have more, I wanna be more aligned in the wholeness of who I am. I wanna be whole in all aspects of my life. How do you know when you're being successful there? What shows up, how do you measure that? And I only say that term loosely with the air sure. quotes, because in everything in our business, what we measure grows and expands. Yeah. So how do you know when you're moving in the right directions in that space? Because I guarantee you there's going to be messy. And then what does it mean to have the right, the right? And I think about, I was on another call that we talked about strategic vulnerability. And I love mm -hmm. the term. It was Lisa Dad that actually put that out there. How do you strategically invite the right witnesses so that they're serving to help you grow and that they're learning in that environment too? What does that look like? What does that look like to create that model for success for this next whatever? Yeah, brilliant, brilliant question. Um, so one of the things I truly believe is that where women gather magic happens. And yet I totally suck at putting my place, myself in the center of the group where women are gathering around me, right? So it's very easy for me to quickly end up in leadership positions. So I carefully, right, um, create safe places for magic to happen for me and for that support to happen so that I'm getting the support that I need because if I'm not getting, receiving, and it's usually that I'm not asking for. So if I'm not asking for and allowing myself to receive support, right, then how can I possibly stand in that place of strategic vulnerability for others? 
um, and, and play that role, right? You know, it's like um, we all need, it's like I, I need the women at my back, right? And need the women at my back. And then all these women at my back, right, holding me so that I'm facing out to all these women who are holding each other, right? You know, in like this beautiful funnel um, of spaciousness, right? So that it's... Um, remembering that I don't have to do the work on my own. And then just kind of as a, a funny aside, as you were talking, um, I'm a big fan of Gretchen Rubin, mm -hmm. who uh, wrote the assessment, the Board Tendencies Assessment. And we just recently, Brad and I just recently read her book, Better Than Before, All About Habits. And in her archetypal system, I'm an obliger, right? <laughs> Which means I don't get things done unless I have people to hold me accountable. <laughs> Right? So, you know, part of this is like, okay, this is my normal, is that I know I am not, um, uh, I don't love doing the work alone. I like doing work in community. And yet I've been struggling with this inner battle alone. I've invested in training and coaching in courses, and I don't need that, right? I, I, I don't need information or plans or programs. I need the loving support of a community of women all coming together and saying yes. Yeah. And what I have experienced over the years and part of the challenge of this, um, I'll share a, a story. I was at a, um, like a little workshop for, uh, with a group of women and we were doing the little painted squares where you put all the squares together and it creates this beautiful whole painting. And I had finished my square and so the lady gave us extra squares and I'm just painting and this one very dear friend turns and snaps at me and says, is there anything you can't do? And I went, holy shit, right? And I think in that moment I started to shut down and close in. So if I don't fix this piece, right, the, you know, it's like, okay, I'm not perfect, right? Don't assume I'm perfect. I got all this mess right here. So I've, I've created a messy place, yeah. right? to show my humanness and it's stupid, right? Because well, it is. I, mean, and I will tell you, like, there's so my, my, much. My intelligent head is like, what yeah. have you done? And then the emotional part of me is like that longing for that connection with the people to see me. I don't want to be seen as- Isn't that the dichotomy though? And that's the place where we sabotage ourselves most I find. Is yeah. there's the, please see me for who I really am. Please see me and oh my God, please don't see me. We have this whole dichotomy that we play around, I want you to see me the way I want you to see me, yes. but I don't want you to see me wide open naked with all my flaws and the cellulite and the bags and the this and whatever. And mm -hmm. I've also found it was an interesting aha and everything that you're talking about is resonating a little bit too deeply, <laughs> <laughs> just to be honest, because I found out recently that I have a huge connection between money, health, and love in my life. And it's as if I can have one moving, but then I sabotage the other two because I feel like I'm not allowed to have them all. Yep. And there is that space of, I don't want people to think that I have everything figured out. I don't, I, I honestly, the older I get, and I'll be 45 in July, I mm -hmm. swear the, the more I know, the less I know. And I feel like I'm more of a student than ever, especially as I stand in a role to be the teacher. Mm -hmm. And I find it interesting because one of the things I'm going to, kind of jump us both in the even deeper end <laughs> because I, I'm feeling like I need to go here. And I feel like the, the question around community and that receiving space is a challenging space to play in. Yeah. And I know that even for us to dance right now in this whole topic around self-love and what that means, this is really new for you. This mm -hmm. is really that space. And so I'm curious because I'm already feeling, I can feel some of that going up in my own body as I'm recognizing and being a witness to my own shit through this. Right. Um, what's, where, what are you feeling right now standing in this place of almost naked, not even almost, in very naked vulnerability to say, wow, I, I feel kind of raw and wide open would love to right here, right now, explore what that feels like, how you're processing through that, because we're going deep right now. And I just think it's a powerful way to share with others that this is real. The stuff that we process and put out there for other people is real. Yeah. And we go through the messy parts real time. Yeah. Um... So I feel really safe, 
right? I think you, you, you make it really easy to go there. Um, there's part of me that's like, oh my God, this shit is so much fun, right? <laughs> And um, I'm such a verbal processor. And, 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 you know, as Candy's saying, like, this is something I'm launching. It's not even out in the public yet as of the recording of this. So it does feel very new and it feels super, super right. Right. Like it, um, it feels vulnerable and terrifying and yet so right. And I'm, I'm like seeing new frameworks in my head for how to talk about self-love for women. And, but we can't do it alone. Right. And so I'm, I'm calling people to come and play with me in this journey because we cannot do it alone. And I think women in leadership and the, the more that we move up in our careers, we have to find people to play with. Right. One of my um, mentors, a class we took last year, I remember her talking about this about um, and she's a, the president of a, you know, a larger company. And she's like, it's lonely. Right. It's lonely. There's no one to talk to. There's no one that's going through the same things and the same challenges and the same struggles. And I was heartbroken for her because it doesn't have to be lonely. Right. Right. And I and often it's find it's our fear of connecting with other women. Right. right. It's our fear of connecting intimately with other women. That's at the core of the self-love challenge. Right. It's, um, yeah, and because uh, it's that fear of being ju judged and criticized and abandoned and mm -hmm. left out to hang raw and wide open and letting those people come in with their tentacles to attack and and all of that fear yeah. shows up. And yeah. what's interesting is I love it. it one of my mentors, Brendan Burchard, will say he's like, I think it's interesting that people think that no one else has ever experienced what you've experienced <laughs> really with seven plus billion people on the planet. Do you want And generations and generations of, yeah. do you honestly think there's never been someone that's gone through and there is a power of connection and letting people see that, but it's sad because we've been bought into as a culture, a belief that says it's lonely at the top. It's mm -hmm. lonely if I stand out and become that courageous leader that stands in my own space, not realizing that there's people that are waiting for someone to be the catalyst to step into that space first. They're just waiting for someone else to give them that perceived sense of permission to say, oh my God, I'm not alone. Yeah. I'm not by myself. And it makes me think of, and I don't know if you watch Super Soul Sundays ever, but there was an episode with Brene Brown and Oprah, and they were talking about how Brene Brown was spinning after her TED Talk. And really she wanted her husband to crack it, hack into the system and like pull it off. Cause she was like, I have a PhD in vulnerability and I don't want to stand in that space. And she's like, and then I read the comments and it was very much about the space you're talking about. People were cruel. They were cruel about her size, about how she looked, about this. And Oprah goes, never read the comments. <laughs> that is the fastest way to enter into the cabinet for the bag of yeah. chips. Yeah. Never read the comments. Yeah. She's my team vets through all the comments and they only give me the happy ones. Nice. She was, I am not allowed to go on social media and read my read anything because yeah. people are so because what happens is and I think this is the space that is so challenging and it's why I'm so I'm every part of my body has chills right now and I feel like I'm so on that verge of having a little bit of that cathartic cleanse myself with the tears and the emotions because every part of me is is wanting to scream and go yes because everything you're speaking about is that space to say Standing in that space causes other people to face their insecurities yeah. and it causes them to hold up that mirror and all that projection, all that hate, all those comments ultimately aren't about you. They're not about me. They're about other people, ego, insecurities, fear, vulnerabilities surfacing and them having the panic attack saying, oh my God, I don't want to do this alone. I don't want to be left wide open where nobody's going to love me and care for me. And so, and I think that's our biggest fear, right? Is yeah. That, and so we have to step out when we have the support in place. Right. 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 You know? Step out to step in. Mm -hmm. and that but, don't step, but you're not stepping out alone, like making no, sure you no. have support in place before you step out. Well, and one of the beautiful things that we got to experience recently, because Manette and I are part of a couple groups together, and we play with a, a powerful group of thought leaders who are creating massive movements and change, but we had opportunities to mastermind in that space. And I think for me, one of the things that showed up was the reminder, because I have been playing in that hiding in my, you know, in plain sight and 
thinking I had to go at it alone and things have been kind of tough as I've been having some shifts, Mm -hmm. especially towards the end of last year. And instead of reaching out, I went like the turtle in and I closed out the very group that supports me and loves me. And when we got into this mastermind space and got vulnerable, it was such a reminder of there's so much strength in reaching out. Mm -hmm. There's so much strength when you have the right people who can hold space for you to just say, I'm freaking out and I'm scared right now. Or I'm feeling really exposed and right now I'm not feeling a lot of self-love and I need somebody to not fix it, but just hold the space and let me like do the ugly cry right now. Right. (laughs) And vomit it out and just, and I think we forget that sense of community, how much we need. And for those of us that have been those high driving, big player powerhouses, to ask, to ask. Yeah. And whether it's, we need help, we need love, we need space, we need honest truth, we need the butt kicking, we need someone to call our bullshit, we need whatever it is. Because my community is not the yes people. My community is the people that do the tough love, right? (laughs) I know I could call Manette and she'd give me tough love when I need it, but I also know that she would hold this beautiful space of love and just hold a space that if I was like, and that for me has been such a challenging shift because I'm finding that I need that more and more. And yeah. sometimes I just need the space to go, I'm scared to death right now. I'm scared of the next big that's coming mm-hmm. that drop in that says, Candy, here's the space you need to play in now. Yeah. And I'm like, what? As I want to drive off the road. Cause my downloads always come when I'm in the car. <laughs> like, could we really stop having the downloads when I'm like, you know, but I think it's cause it's when I'm quiet with my thoughts. Right. Yeah. For me, it's usually when I'm walking. Well, I do outside. that too. Yeah. I walked into trees and had <laughs> things where, because you do, you get like, because my dog knows where we're going and he leads yeah. the way. And there's times that you get so caught up in that space. Yeah. Um, I've been taking my phone more because sometimes I'm like, I think right now is when I want to reach out. Yeah. So I think it's so beautiful that you put that out there. I always take my phone because I got to ha- write it down. <laughs> well, yeah, I do the voice memo. I, I joke that if someone were to steal my phone, yeah. um, I'd be in a straight jacket for the amount of screaming I do it myself. Or the, oh my God, I got a thought. And then I look at my voice text or my voice memos and I'm like, what was I trying to say? Yeah. And so I yeah. say and it, it as fast as I said it. And I'm like, oh, I think that's what I meant to say. Yeah. I don't know, auto type. Text was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, capturing all those ideas. Capture, capture, capture all those ideas. I wanted to go back to this idea of strategic vulnerability. Um, because the first thing that comes up to me is like, hmm, strategic vulnerability. And that's a Lisa dad. I got to give her credit. That yeah. came out of like, in our conversation, we were in the throes of it. And all of a sudden, I'm like, and I told her, I said, I'm stealing that word. I'm shamelessly stealing that phrase. Yeah, but it also makes me go, ooh, right? <laughs> so I'm going to just toss a little bomb in there because, like, it's the opposite of, you know, um, integrity and authenticity for me if I'm being strategic about my vulnerability. And so if I really dig deep into why am I struggling with putting those two words together, right, you know. Um, and I think the space is about, it's not about that we can't be vulnerable, but there are places where yes. it's not appropriate for us yes. to be that vulnerable. And both with the responsibility of the way we show up as leaders and being powerhouses and yeah. doing the work we do. And so there's people that aren't ready for that level of vulnerability. And That's there's right. people that will use it to their advantage yeah. rather than hold that space that makes us want to step in that vulnerability more. And so when we talk about strategic vulnerability, it's finding those right, those witnesses that are going to be the witnesses that are going to help hold you accountable, that aren't going to be the witnesses that shut you down. And I want to share a great example of how I think that didn't work or an example of when they could have been a lot more strategic was in the whole Me Too campaign. Mm. And um, which is so inspiring, right? And what has happened and what is going to hopefully continue to happen from that has been magical. Absolutely. And I have my Me Too stories. I don't feel the need to share the details of my Me Too story. And I certainly wouldn't share them on Facebook when people haven't asked to read them, right? right? And so I want to honor women for sharing their stories 
and to invite them to think about the impact of where they're sharing them and how they're showing up um, as leaders in their communities because reading those stories is so triggering for people, yeah. right? And so it, it's, a, it's a fine dance. And again, you know, no judgment. And I totally honor the women for, for feeling safe and strong enough to share their stories right. publicly. And yet at the I think same- that's a great example. I think mm-hmm. it's powerful because I've had the same, I have not put a hashtag me too. And I've got multiple me too stories yeah. because it's the same feeling of, I so honor this and support this on so many levels. And yet there's forums and places to share this. Cause I've shared pieces of it in CNN and I've shared pieces of when it was a construct that allowed almost a teaching opportunity or a space for a safe space. Yeah. So I resonate with that deeply because I think there is very much, that's a great example because I fully honor. Yeah. And I did share about how deeply I was impacted by the movement. I shared me too, but I didn't share the details. Right. Right. And so there's a fine distinction as leaders when we step up about oversharing, right? And oversharing, like you said, with people who aren't ready to hear, who haven't chosen to listen. And, um, you know, and, and, and I'm, like I said, I'm not trying to dishonor anyone for sharing their stories, but be thoughtful about the impact of sharing your story on yeah. others, right? And so, and so at first I'm like, strategic vulnerability, I don't get it. And then now I'm like, it, in this context, it totally makes sense, you know, and right. One time my mom asked me, she, and this was long before the Me Too campaign, she's like, why don't you share what happened to you as part of what you do? And I'm like, well, it doesn't make any sense, has no relevance right. in the context of me being a business coach for creative entrepreneurs, right? And when there is a point and a purpose, I do share parts of that, right? But the, in the self-love campaign, that's totally different. There's, there may be different opportunities right, to, to share that. And I also think as leaders working in the space of vulnerability, we have to have moved past the depth of emotional pain in order to stand in the role of leader and role model for this work that we're doing. I was at a conference one time where we were practicing speaking and showing up on stage and sharing our hero's journey stories and this person got up to share her story and she was sobbing. So it didn't position her as the expert. Instead, we felt deep empathy. We felt love for her. Everyone wanted to hold and support her, but the story was still too raw, right? Right. And so there's a moment in time when you're ready to share that story. So if you ask me why now, it's because I feel like I can share the story without completely dissolving into a wet puddle on the floor where I can hold the space. Do I have it all down? Have I figured it out? Well, no, I don't know if I ever will, right? But um, I'm far enough along in the journey to healing my relationship with myself that I feel like I can pull others along and up with me and show that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And so being really conscious of the impact of our sharing on others, I think is really important when we look at the advent of social media and how social media has um, changed how we connect and communicate with each other. Yeah, and I think it really goes back to that whole space of when you choose to step in a role of leadership, there is a great personal responsibility. And I remember even when the, my CNN article came out, the reason they wanted to interview me is with all the people that responded to the um, post that was there, Mine went viral and I was the only one that showed the responsibility inside of what that did to create different choices in my life and where I stood up and what. And so they wanted to really play in that space because there was work that was done. And it's not to say that there aren't moments that you say things and share things because you're so in that space that you might get a little emotional. But to your point, there's a difference between really being in a space to be present to it and being in a space where you're just unraveling layers and layers and layers of stuff you haven't dealt with. And it's interesting because I remember redirecting in a talk I gave, I was at a women's conference and I was very clear. And for some reason we kept altering the agenda and people kept going before me. And every person that went in my slot said exactly the message I was going to say at that moment. I'm like, (laughs) all right. And I remember going in and saying, what is it you want me to say? And I could feel the 
smallness of the room. I could feel the victim mentality. I could feel yeah. the, and if I heard one more woman tell me, my husband won't let me, I thought I was going to explode. Yeah. And I knew there was a different message. And it was one of the only times on stage I got into my story at the level that I did. Mm -hmm. And I remember someone saying to me, oh, that's got to be your story from now on. And I said, no, it absolutely doesn't because it doesn't serve with what I'm doing. Yeah. There are spaces where pieces of that might be reflected on. I remember one of the first times I told one of my powerful stories in corporate, it was with the right group of leaders that I was demonstrating the power of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And it was very vulnerable for me to say that yet still I had done the work with it and there was a space that was created. Mm -hmm. And I think there's such, um, validity with for lack of a better word in understanding the responsibility of how you share and I do think I think social media is a beautiful powerful very constructive engine and I also think it's a big vomiting cesspool because there's not there's 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 both sides no of the filters. equation there's and no there filters. is no filters and there's no, and for yeah. some people that don't have the tools, aren't prepared or didn't ask for it, yeah. you can do more damage than good. And I get that you can't do anything to anybody that wasn't their choice. Right. There's still a responsibility in knowing, did I show up from the best intention or what was I looking for? just a space to vent. And I, I share with people all the time, you need to be responsible for your venting. Yeah. There's venting up and out, Never vent down, and I don't mean that from a, uh, a, a power space. I mean right. that from a readiness space. Yeah. And it's why I tell leaders never vent down to your employees because they don't have the full context of no. where you're coming from, and you can make them spin inadvertently because they're only taking what you said. And so there's such power and grace in what you just described that I, I really want that to resonate with everyone that's listening right now and to take a moment because I truly, I have such a deep connection to the Me Too campaign. And I love the example that you use. In fact, the song from Carrie Underwood and Ludacris that was built for that campaign, I Am a Champion, is my theme song this year. There's everything about that that yeah. resonates in my soul. Mm -hmm. And, and I say the and, not the but, and, there's also that space of taking responsibility for how we choose to show up in that movement and honoring everyone's stories. And can we get to a place where we're sharing those stories in a more responsible, um, yeah. effective way? And so I think there's both sides of that, right? And yeah. Yeah, it's always and, a fine dance and a balance and trying to and, harmonize that. And it takes a lot of courage to share your story. And I think um, Facebook creates this false sense of being a safe container. Yes. Right? Uh, yes. And I think it takes courage to tell somebody, I honor your story, but that's too much for me. Yeah. That's too much for me right now. <laughs> that, <laughs> that makes me laugh because I'm thinking about the whole um, last political campaign presidential election, right? Like the desperate I, housewives I, of I, Congress, I, you mean? I, that I, political I, campaign, right? That was yeah. yeah. Like yeah. reality television on steroids and it was like our version of the Desperate Housewives of Congress? Yes. Yeah, totally. Totally. But just, you know, it's like hide, hide, hide the message and, and to the point where I just stayed off, right? Same here. Just I disengaged in it because we weren't having a conversation. It was too much about they, they, this, yeah. this. And that's part of where I think the biggest opportunity is. And we're getting into a really big space. And there's people right now that may be, and for those of you that might be feeling triggered by this conversation and are feeling, I do encourage you to find the safe space to have the courageous conversation. Yeah. The reason Manette and I are going here is not to purposely push buttons, but it is to purposely push buttons. I want to, and I've said this, this is a space for us to have a courageous conversation because I honestly believe that a lot of what's going on economically, globally, politically, socially, culturally is a function of us not having conversations that say, I honor your perspective. I honor your position and I might offer something different. It's that and conversation we're not willing yeah. to have because we're so caught up in our yeah. noise and so caught up in what's triggering us that we're shutting down everything else versus saying, wow, I honor you and I'm feeling really triggered right now. And I'm not sure I agree with that 100%. Yeah. We're not willing to have the and conversation, which takes a lot of courage.
And so I think it's a beautiful space to dance in. Yeah, I, I, I so agree. And I would, there was something I was going to add to that. And my, Absolutely, please my thought went in and out about the honoring, the honoring those, oops, I've got an internet connection is unstable here. So you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine. So you are great. Okay. Awesome. And also that I love the, the, this piece that I think we're kind of dancing around is that as leaders, we have to take 100% responsibility. And I would just say as human beings, if we all just took 100% responsibility for our feelings, for our thoughts, for our words, for our actions, the world would be a different place. And I think at the, at the bottom of this um, <laughs> self-love journey that you know, I'm on and want to pull people along on with me is, and it's uh, one of the, the four um, agreements from Don, Re Don Miguel Ruiz, right? It's like 100% responsibility, like that has changed my life. Like sitting in that space of always looking at where am I not taking responsibility? Right. right, and Brian Tracy will say the three most powerful words you can say in any given situation is I am responsible. Yeah. Even if it's in just how you're reacting. And it's interesting because you're so hitting on the crux of everything is the only thing we have the ability to control is what we believe what we what you believe what you expect what you think what you say and what you do and the common denominator is you as an individual you cannot control that for another human being yeah. including your children yeah. you can influence you can show up but the only thing and i i had a really and we're going to wrap this up and we're going to bring you back because i want to keep playing in this space um, this is such a beautiful conversation. And some of you are like, I'm not so sure I think it's beautiful. Well, I'm just telling you, in my mind, it's beautiful. And right now it's my show, so it's beautiful. Um, it's this space of understanding that our responsibility is in how we choose to show up. Our responsibility is how we choose to serve. And it's with the intention that we come from. Our responsibility is not what people choose to do with it. Because regardless of our best intention, there are people that are going to make different decisions. Yeah. We take responsibility and the responsibility is, am I showing up from the best place I can? Am I showing up to truly be a leader? Am I showing up to serve or am I showing up to be, and there's a difference between selfful and selfish. Selfish yeah. is doing it in spite of others because you need to have your stuff out. Right. Versus selfful saying, I'm doing this to serve others. Mm -hmm. And if you always come from, and Wayne Dyer would say, if you always come from a place of service, then you are coming from the best intention and from a place that is godlike with love and with purpose. Yeah. If you are coming from anything else, which is your ego, there is usually something you're not being responsible for. And so when you come from a place of true love, true service, to show up with the best intention with what you have at that moment. And sometimes that means zip your mouth because it means you don't have anything else to offer. What other people choose to do with it, that's not your responsibility. Yeah. Your responsibility is that choice for how you show up in that space. And I think that's such a beautiful way to start bringing this home. And I want to make sure before I forget, Manette, because this is a powerful conversation and there's some people that really want to learn more about this new space that you're really unveiling and, and opening up around self-love and what that means to have those people be witness in that space and be with you on that journey. What's the best way that they can continue this discussion with you? Yeah, you thank you for asking. You. So um, the easiest way is to go to my website, MinetteRyerden.com forward slash love notes. Mm. And there's an opt-in page to just connect with me, come into our Facebook community, or you can just go to Facebook and look for love notes to myself. Um, and uh, just come and find a safe place to grow and to start and or continue this conversation around really pulling all the pieces of yourself back into wholeness. Because I truly believe that we can all look at life through this lens of self-love first, that then we have the power to change the world. Absolutely. And love that and encourage all of you to go out there. Um, check out what Dr. Manette's working on. Um, I want to ask a question. Will you come back and then play in this space with me some more? And, and let's, Go the next level. I want to know what happens as you unfold this, this whole space around creating love notes for yourself and self-love and what that means and would love to dance with you in this space again.
Yeah, thank you for asking me. I'd be honored to come back. And next time, uh, remind me and I'll share some of the love notes I've been writing. Ooh, I would love that. Yes. And so with that, as we're kind of closing things out, um, powerful conversation. I just feel, I can feel everything tingling right now. Is there something that you want to leave as a last thought, an aha, a something to marinate on as people are processing through this just really juicy conversation we just had? Yeah, thank you. I think just noticing the distinction between self-esteem and self-love. Like self-love is a complete and whole honoring of ourselves that comes within. And you see a lot of talk about needing to have self-esteem, but self-esteem is driven by other people's response to us. And when we stand in that Wayne Dyer space of leading with love and service, that is completely different because we're completely detached from the need for outcomes or the need of feedback or the need to be received with glowing accolades, right? It's like in the place of self-love, I'm doing my work because it's my most important work and it will resonate with the right people and I do the work no matter what. Right. And it's really, I mean, everything that you just said is that space of truly being able to honor and step into a space to say yes to yourself. Yeah. And it's that space of intrinsically knowing your own value and self-worth without any desired need for extrinsic outcomes, judgments, anything. It is a knowing space that you get to stand in when you truly have that powerful yes, that is you saying yes to who you are, how you get to show up. It is an opportunity to destroy that noise and knowing that leadership is your choice. It is nothing that's going to be bequeathed to you, nothing that you are going to learn, earn, be born with. It is truly a gift and it is truly a choice that you get to decide whether or not you want to make. And as we've always said, leadership is how you choose to show up. It's how you choose to serve. And it's how you choose to take that powerful personal responsibility inside those two spaces. And so I hope, I hope you're taking a lot away from this discussion we had today. Just know that I'm sending you all heart to heart loves, my deepest gratitude um, and appreciation for Dr. Manette, the work that she's doing and for showing up in this space. I have so much love for you. Thank you to all of you for showing up on today's episode of the Powerhouse Podcast. Please, please be sure to subscribe so that you do not miss any of these powerful, courageous conversations we're engaging in. And just know that I'm here. We are creating that safe space for you. And we're cheering you on to standing your most magnificent light. With that, we'll catch you next time.